the Shibuya incident arc for the Jujutsu Kaisen anime had finally gotten adapted and concluded its anime run a couple months back. The arc stretched for over 16 episodes and after digesting what I just saw and watching through all of season 2 again, I decided that I wanted to make a video going over this arc and all the major stuff that takes place from the good, the bad, the tragic and pretty much everything in between. Cause as all of us who's watched and read know, this specific arc for Jujutsu Kaisen was monumental in how it changed the overarching story and more importantly how we went on to perceive it. A ton of stuff takes place that shifts the story into a completely different direction that I don't think any of us coming off of season 1 could have predicted. It's an immense stretch of episodes that had me look at JJK in a completely different light so I want to share my thoughts on it as everyone else has already done so like a certain website that managed to watch the entirety of it and resulted in it being a 6 out of 10. So I guess the best place to begin is where it all started and oh boy Gege done a madness with this part. To kickstart JJK's descent into hell Gege first had to get rid of the saving grace within Jujutsu society which just so happens to be good old Satoru Gojo who at this point was JJK's most broken character that seemed almost impossible to defeat. The mastermind behind the cursed spirits had a plan that could not go forward without Gojo packed up somehow some way so the start of this arc was entirely dedicated to the sealing of Satoru Gojo and this first major moment of Shibuya was an absolute bombshell. We all know how this ends for Gojo here but my god the events leading up to it was just as shocking as the outcome. Gojo vs the curses was the beginning to so many goaded moments and stretches within this arc and I'm sure most of y'all can relate but this segment left such a massive impression on me when I first peeped. Seeing Gojo scrap will always be a highlight and one of the greatest things the story has to offer and with this here watching Gojo bully these cursed spirits who at multiple points within the fight thought they had the upper hand against him was just too entertaining. Jogo was getting tossed around, Hanami literally got eviscerated by Gojo's cursed energy alone and Choso was kept quiet unable to do anything but pick up civilians in the background. Gojo had a field day showing the levels he's at compared to these guys even whilst being nerfed by his surroundings. These curses didn't fully expect to stop Gojo in his tracks with the whole surround him with civilians tactic but even at this capacity bro could still perform and destroy them entirely. Shit was so entertaining to watch and it definitely peaked with that surprise domain Gojo pulled off. With almost every factor in this situation he's facing set out to nerf his ability, this monster performs a madness with his domain that not only allowed him to destroy all the transfigured humans Mahito pulled up with, which was around a thousand or something, but also kept the civilians safe throughout the whole process. Gojo proved right here that he's simply on a planet of his own in comparison to every single person in the story at this point and after this hall of famer performance, Gege finally decides his time is up and packs this guy from the story. As I said before, the saving grace and trump card of Jujutsu society was Gojo and without him everything was set to crumble with these curses set to reign and following his ceiling, stuff got rough to say the least. We finally got to see how the group consisting of Yuji and everyone handle a situation of this magnitude without the most broken thing ever there to help them and to my surprise they actually held their own for a fair bit of time. I don't think I'm alone with this impression that with Gojo gone at this specific time, the sorcerers were pretty much cooked and about to lose this war badly. If we're going bar for bar, sorcerer for sorcerer, they was at a complete disadvantage here. The strongest who's bailed them out on multiple occasions was no longer present so that could really only mean one thing. Mechamaru set himself up to help the sorcerers in case a situation like this actually happened and despite everything leading towards going to shit, the sorcerers actually stand on business for a minute. It was go time from the moment Gojo was sealed and instead of straight madness taking place from the gun, we actually get to see some cool shit from Yuji and the others. Megami and Yuji team up to help take down the curtain and beat the hell out of some randoms who tried capitalizing on Gojo being gone and more importantly Nanami finally gets his moment. He finally gets that time to shine beating the brakes of Blondie right here in the most brutal fashion I can describe. As we all know Nanami is a stoic character pretty much taking everything thrown at him on the chin but once he saw his boy half dead on the ground along with multiple other comrades of his, Nanami who's the most calm and composed character in Jujutsu to got sent into one scary ass rage. Something you'd expect from any other sorcerer but Nanami because of how his character was presented to us so far and this beatdown was a textbook massacre. Y'all saw how Haruta got worked in this fight which was completely deserved but aside from giving us one of the dopest smackdowns in JJK thus far, the showcase of what a true grade 1 sorcerer looks like was incredibly good. Something that obviously Yuji, Megumi and Nobara are ultimately trying to achieve. It's been a minute since Gojo got sealed but the group were actually doing their thing holding their own in this nasty situation
situation they're in and at this point the arc was progressing fairly well and everything was a great watch but it wasn't groundbreaking stuff. The stuff that Jujutsu Kaisen does best with brazy hand to hand beef and hype that gets you jumping off of your walls and this is where Gege dropped Yuji vs Choso and bro this sh was a masterpiece and the first clear 10 out of 10 episode. Before release this arc was hyped up to the absolute mountaintops by manga fans and I'm sure you've heard a couple of people in your circle or wherever say something like you ain't ready for Shibuya. Up until this point everything has been really good but nothing that truly lives up to what that phrase was describing. But once this 22 minute death battle between Yuji and Choso dropped people finally started to realize how great this arc actually is and we wasn't even close to the peak. Yuji made his way down into the station and before bro even lands Choso was already on smoke and this kickstarted JJK's best fight thus far. This fight was wild in every sense of the word but obviously extremely entertaining and judging from the reactions online when this dropped it definitely took aback pretty much the whole community and almost instantly became a fan favorite. Yuji and Choso was going all out and throughout all phases of the fight the beginning when it first kicked off the second round in the bathroom and the moment they both really locked in it was life or death for both of them. Yuji was doing his thing like usual as close quarters combat is his forte but for the first time he finally got beat in his own domain. Hand to hand combat getting busy with your opponent is all Yuji but he couldn't hack Choso for the life of him. Choso was a freaking monster in this fight. He had a mission to get back for his brothers and throughout most of the fight he had a clear upper hand against Yuji. Long range he got that. Medium range with a little distance between them he got that too and even close range was his area to dictate against one of the most dangerous in the field. Choso was a goddamn freak of nature here and the way he shut down Yuji multiple times was wild. I love the different range of abilities he had as well because it made the fight a little more interesting than them just throwing straight punches. There was so much to deal with so it was interesting to see how Yuji could counter such a complete enemy like Choso who's ironically bloodthirsty as hell at this time and was ready to take out Yuji at any point. Yuji was holding up for a while but once he finally stood on business and had that moment of understanding his role and all that he's involved in the real fight began from that point and our boy Yuji cooked. This was the most dynamic scene of an already goaded fight at this point and Yuji and Choso put their all into this part of the fight. Yuji was doing everything he could manipulating his surroundings and using his battle intelligence to get the better of Choso and Choso was not giving him that advantage. He even started to pull out new moves which made this segment as great as it was with both of them gunning for that win. It was all so damn cool and the choreography just elevate everything to that next level and just like the rest of the fight that climax was mad. Yuji thought he finally caught him but Choso was secure all along and destroyed Yuji ending the fight with him winning. The damn OST cuts off after the craziest two minute segment I've seen from JJK and Yuji gets caught with that nasty combo. Choso could have easily killed Yuji here but we obviously get that moment which was just as shocking as the rest of the fight. Choso started to get some PTSD flashbacks to events that he don't recall happening and somehow some way Yuji ends up traumatizing him after this fight. Choso was so out of it the aspect ratio on screen started tripping as well and even though he won the fight his mental state got completely bamboozled and we figure out later on that he's somehow Yuji's brother which was a twist that can honestly say no one saw coming at this point. We just concluded one of the toughest and closest fights in the series so far and literally moments after we get a scene like this that's so out of the ordinary but at least create an interesting plotline for us to follow with the episodes that came later. Choso rocked my world with his performance in this fight I'm not gonna lie his abilities were so dope and the way he kept up with Yuji and even handled him was incredible stuff. I love that Gege ain't end his character here and just killed him off as bro actually became a cool ally for the group later on. But the stuff that he did in this fight alone already makes him one of my favorites as from start to finish him and Yuji put on a damn good show and quite clearly the greatest JJK scrap thus far. Shit was generational just like the stuff that followed this fight because Toji freaking Fushiguro made his grand return. After this Choso fight we get back with the others who at this point was getting pressured by the curse spirit Dagon. More times than not when sorcerers go ahead and jump one of the curses it usually goes in their favor but not here. Even though these lot had assembled a decent group to go against one of the curses this enemy Dagon was folding all of them and holding his own in this 3v1 but after the Fushiguro family got involved it was wraps for Dagon. Megami didn't do much but create an escape for the sorcerers but the other Fushiguro who we previously saw beat down Satoru Gojo mercilessly made
made his surprise appearance, jumping into an active domain to fight the strongest person in his sight. Toju Fushiguro was back after a pretty brief break from the story and of course Gege had to make his entrance as dramatic and flashy as possible. Once that granny brought Toju back and got handled, we could already tell he was going to wreak some havoc, but man, he absolutely destroyed Dagon here. He grabbed Maki's playful cloud off her with ease and started to work Dagon for fun. Toju was slamming him left right and after a ruthless beatdown he took Dagon out. I lowkey felt a bit bad for Dagon because of how dirty Toji did him after he was comfortably handling the other sorcerers. But this fight right here was just a puppet of carnage doing everything in his nature to kill the strongest person in front of him and mad it was insane. I can never get bored of watching Toji throw hands and this massacre was so entertaining to watch. The episode where Toji pulled up right at the end must have confused the hell out of all the anime onlys because at that point you don't know what the hell bro is about to do. He obviously had the capability to slam everyone there pretty easily but after he took out Dagon, Toji had his eye on one sorcerer only. He turned his focus to his son after the whole battle against Dagon and for a second it looked very peak for our boy Megami. Toji is just walking towards the group and a couple frames later Megami is getting dashed out of the building. Toji was gunning for Megami's head here and I swear bro blitzed him at least 7 times. Megami tried to lock in and visualize himself winning against this monster but there was no chance for him. Even though Megami was getting washed I gotta give him some credit for some of his evasive moves cause each little action Toji did had me thinking Megami was cooked. That moment where he destroys the rabbits with the rubble he created wasn't in the manga but such a perfect scene to show the levels between these two if you know it wasn't clear enough already. Toji did all of this but in the end he obviously took himself out in front of Megami ending his spell in Shibuya. The relief he had once he found out Megami wasn't taken in by the Zenin clan was a really good moment to end it off. After a monstrous showcase of pure power Gege included that short little scene showing a bit of Toji's humanity in front of his son. Similar to how he went out against Gojo in their fight and was overall a very very good conclusion to his character. For now at least because you never know when this Toji guy might pop back up again out of nowhere. But after Toji got busy and went on his spree of violating everyone we move on to Jogo who after barely escaping Toji back in the station goes on a little killing spree himself attempting to take out the entire group that was there at the time. Jogo really hid from Toji in the background to finally catch some W's and effortlessly take out this sorcerer group. To be fair to them they came out of a war with Dagon but even whilst being fully fit they aren't touching Jogo. As described in the anime he's on another level compared to the disaster cuts they just fought who had them on ropes already so this exchange between Jogo and them was rough to say the least. Jogo gets downplayed heavy when it comes to his strength but in fairness you gotta cut him some slack as his big fight before this point was freaking Gojo the strongest being at that point in the story and following this little scrap that moment took place. The moment that changed should be a drastically with none other than the king of curses making his grand return. The sorcerers are screwed right now with Megami in a mess, Maki and Nanami burnt to crisp and Yuji beat down by Choso. So these guys needed something desperately to go their way in this chaos and Gege really said fuck it and added Ryomen Sukuna to the mix who surprise surprise was on smoke the moment he was awakened. Any possible thing that could irritate Sukuna got dealt with mercilessly and Sukuna from this point on started his rampage of hell beginning with Jogo himself. And not gonna lie, these next two episodes are easily the most devastating and shocking portion of this arc. Coming off Toji vs Dagon, I thought nothing could be more of a one-sided battle than that with all the moves Toji was pulling on Dagon. But this second half of episode 16 showed that there is levels to this stuff and whatever any character does, Gojo and Sukuna will outperform them in every aspect. These two are in a different dimension of power in comparison to everyone else and even whilst not being at his peak strength, Sukuna is still far beyond anyone in Shibuya and the Jujutsu Kaisen world at the moment if we being honest and poor Jogo had to feel the brunt of Sukuna's malice. Gege really made him fight the two strongest and as we already saw he got packed the fuck up. Sukuna was having fun being out of Yuji for a bit and took his time playing with Jogo here. It was like watching a nightmare play out in real time because look at Sukuna's face right here. There's a reason why he's regarded as the king of curses and despite so many ridiculous moves from Jogo which could have done some serious work to most characters in the verse there was nothing to Sukuna and as the fight continued it just got more and more disrespectful. After terrorizing Jogo and even the other sorcerers in there to fight which was funny as hell by the way. Sukuna ends up finishing the job in Sukuna type fashion with Gege flexing his power one last time in this scrap using Jogo's own element of fire to win a clash between them. This fight was unreal man and delivered on every aspect. The fight in the manga has some of the coolest art and paneling Gege's ever drawn and the animators made this stuff look clean as hell. Apart from destroying Jogo in this battle that 
that moment at the end where he showed respect and admiration to Drogo's power was a nice touch. For someone as unsatisfied as Drogo with how everything in his plans went down and ironically burnt to the ground, that stand proud moment with Sukuna of all people acknowledging his ability and strength was a dope conclusion. We all knew it was over for Drogo the moment he awakened Sukuna and despite this battle being epic and all, what happened next was comfortably the most ridiculous part of an arc that already had me jumping out of my chair in shock. Sukuna's rampage continues on and reaches levels beyond the chaos we watched with the Drogo fight and from jump this episode right here throws you into the deep end and at this point you just gotta prepare for the worst to happen. The aesthetic of the episode is completely different to the last and again here we start the episode with Megami who finally got to do what he's always wanted to. Pretty sure you're aware of Megami's willingness to use this trump card of his but if you haven't clocked it check out some of the earlier moments in season 1 where it looks as if he's preparing to launch something crazy. It happens right at the start with Yuji in the school when he was scrapping Sukuna and possibly in his little brawl with Toto funnily enough and all these moments could have resulted in what we saw right here. Megumi's trump card all along was this monstrous Shikigami that he could summon via the 10 shadows technique and it is one of the most busted creatures in the story of JJK. Megumi really summoned it initiating the trial to exercise it said to Haru to have fun dealing with this and got smacked into the wall across from him. Crazy stuff and with Sukuna still awakened you could already tell he would get involved with whatever this is and he did causing this episode to be the most destructive mind boggling 22 minutes of the entire season and it's not even close. After teleporting and saving Megumi from dying to his own technique, Sukuna being the menace he is gets himself involved in that ritual and squares up to the Shikigami which is regarded as the strongest Shikigami in the verse by a country mile. The variety of hacks it had managed to catch even Sukuna off guard a couple times and this battle in itself was one of the most entertaining portions of the arc. You had Sukuna squaring up to Maharaga going back and forth understanding more and more about its abilities and how it functions and it seemed like the more Sukuna found out about the Shikigami and how broken it actually is, the more excited and involved he was in the actual fight. Destroying Maharaga time and time again along with half of Shibuya. Everything was turning to ruin with planes falling, massive buildings getting cut in half like butter and I swear the anime made it feel like the entire world was going to implode on itself because of these two's attacks. Everything was going to shit and the fight just kept on getting crazier but I feel like nobody expected that specific sequence to be as wild as it actually was. From the moment Sukuna used Cleave and the vibe of the scene changed yet again, I was at a loss for words when watching but holy this next sequence was just chaos. The absolute peak of the fear and malice this arc offered and what Sukuna is made of only making his case greater as the best villain in modern shonen. He's in a tear of his own and that entire sequence of his domain unleashing literally evaporating everything in the surrounding area was just surreal and only something Sukuna himself could do. A being that has no regard for human life and unlike Gojo who used his busted abilities to save hundreds of lives, Sukuna obviously used his for the utmost malice, eviscerating literally everybody in his range. Sukuna's run in Shibuya ended here and it was nothing short of generational. Baro was out for less than an hour and destroyed anything he could get his hands on. Kudos to the animators once again who outperformed themselves, going all out with the choreo, soundtrack and damn near everything. There's a few characters that can have you watching at the edge of your seat waiting for something crazy to take place and Sukuna is the definition of that sort of character. The moment he is awakened, something that shifts the story into a whole nother direction is guaranteed to take place and it's what makes his character so special and entertaining. His run in this arc was something else man and Sukuna being the gem that he is even left the MC with a parting gift before ending his short time out, leading us into the final portion of Shibuya, the aftermath. I could make a video going over every heinous thing Sukuna has done up until this point but man, this was up there with the worst. Sukuna really destroyed damn near all of Shibuya, went face to face with the destruction and told Yuji to have a good look after giving him a complete slideshow of everything he's done whilst freed. I was in complete shock here let me not lie because the way in which this affected Yuji whose entire reason for being a sorcerer is to save as much lives as possible was beyond immense. For the first time in JJK we see Yuji not go into a rage or anything like that but just break down in sorrow, subconsciously blaming himself for all that Sukuna did. Despite ironically being such a low point for Yuji here, this was definitely one of the most remembered character moments from Shibuya when it dropped and despite being a nightmare for our boy Yuji as we know she only continued to get worse for him, just like Yuji states himself he's got to carry on and fulfill his duties so even though a catastrophe just took place for him, the work as a Jujutsu sorcerer must go on and the work this time around was none other than good old Mahito. Quite possibly the only curse to give Sukuna a run for his money in terms of being more evil and right after Sukuna's mayhem we was face to face with this demon taking the 
life of Nanami right before Yuji's eyes. The last portion of the arc before this was pure entertainment and gas, but Gege said let's move on to the sorrow and decided to start with wiping Nanami fresh off the earth. Nanami has his last dance and farewell with that flicker between his illusion of Malaysia and reality and dies at the hands of Mahito. I couldn't believe what I was watching, seeing all this play out with one of my favourites who embodied a bunch of themes in the story, and more notably what it meant to be not only a grade 1 but a sorcerer in general completely packed from the story, gone just like that. But even with Nanami blown to bits in shocking fashion, all you can think about at this point is Yuji, who as we already know, gone through a shit ton and just continues to get beat up by the story. Starts off with getting his ass beat by Choso, then faces the brunt of Sukuna's actions and now sees his teacher getting killed at point blank range. He's absolutely cooked at this point and you just couldn't blame him if he truly broke down and called it a day, but the goat continues on and squares up to Mahita. Surely nothing bad happens again right? Right? and this is the main character's moment to shine, oh oh wait no never mind forgot what story I was watching at this point. Gege really wanted to bring Yuji to the absolute brink and he succeeded with flying colours taking out Nobara again right in front of Yuji, finally breaking him into a million pieces. The way Gege pulled off Nobara's defeat here was so messed up when looking back on it. Yuji goes through all this hell, squares up with Mahito all alone and Nobara comes through giving him that fire to keep on going and essentially hope in this god awful situation for him. She was was the key to defeating Mahito with her ability and showed Yuji that he wasn't alone which turned him back into the beast we know he can be. It was his chance here to take out Mahito so he pulled out the left right good night combos to send him with the other disaster curses but Gege ends this short victory for Yuji and brings him back to despair again only this time it was over for him. Yuji's resolve had reached its limit a long time ago but after an outrageous amount of pain he finally broke leaving only one thing to take place which was this monster reveling in Yuji's demise. Man this beatdown was tough to watch but the fact that it takes place after Yuji goes through all that pain beforehand is the factor that takes you aback. It has been a straight downhill trip for the boy and the bad guys are just bathing in straight win after win. This motherfucker Mahito really had a breakthrough seeing Yuji suffer and pulls out a black flash to smack Yuji down the station at point blank range, absolutely destroying him not only physically but also mentally. At this point Shibuya had reached its limit a long time ago as well and we are now in hell for these sorcerers with Gojo in a cube, Nanami and Nobara packed off and Megumi completely out of it. But the story shifts yet again in another direction with possibly the greatest come up we've witnessed from a new gen shonen. Hodo Aoi, 530,000 IQ man, brolic jujutsu sorcerer, the GOAT made his return in style and saved our boy Yuji in more ways than I could count. Brother got Yuji to safety, swatted away Mahito like a fly and also said the coolest line in JJK. Hodo single-handedly saved the story of JJK with his efforts here and got up by Yuji right in spectacular fashion. This scene had me with goosebumps and yelling get this motherfucker when watching and even whilst watching again for this video it hits the exact same. This moment was beyond incredible and satisfactory when taking into account all events prior and Yuji's return after Toto reminded him about what he has been entrusted with and in general providing him that desperately needed helping hand was a next level star. From the absolute brilliant of it all to throwing a charge black flash to knock Mahito away and announce a round 2 with him and Toto as a duo was insane and set up for such an amazing final battle. The hype cultivated from not just this return of Toto but literally everything else that's happened so far in this arc almost guaranteed that this final battle will be the peak of the arc and Jujutsu Kaisen's best so far and it's pretty safe to say that this shit delivered tenfold. The beginning of this final battle where they all went 120% full potential mode had me sold already that this fight was top here, but it simply just kept on getting better and better all the way through to the conclusion. The majority of the fight was straight hands with the duo trying to exercise Mahito and Mahito attempting to separate the two as Toto's ability was beating his ass. The fight was as entertaining as it gets and Gege was pulling out all stops to make this the most dramatic clash in the story thus far. Every single party was giving their all here and it was a true life or death battle where either Yuji finally prevails or shit is truly over. Mahito was in his ultimate form and quite easy easily could have taken the battle but that moment happened with Toto giving the assist of a lifetime for Yuji to slam Mahito with the meanest black flash I think we'll ever see. Bro got punched so hard I could feel that shit through my screen and of course Gege doesn't end shit there and provides us with one of the most satisfactory scenes I've ever seen. The famous I'm you moment which for me and many others is Yuji's greatest peak as a character. Yuji acknowledges that Mahito was actually right with the speech she had in the past episode calling Yuji out on the fact that he he and him are 
one and the same. Just like how Yuji saves others without a second thought, Mahito kills and takes life without hesitation and before Yuji could understand this, he was at a loss to Mahito. Mahito manipulated Yuji with this and it's the main reason to why he managed to break Yuji and was winning the battle against him in the first place. But of course, once Yuji caught on to this truth and understood the nature of the curse that he's fighting along with his role as a sorcerer, he could finally beat Mahito and settle this battle for good. And Yuji really doubles down on his speech and puts the fear of death into Mahito's soul and ended up just walking him down while bro was running for his life. He made everything come full circle as he broke Mahito's psyche just as Mahito broke his in the previous episode. Quite easily one of my favourite character moments ever and it was portrayed here in the anime just as good as I remember it being in the manga. I know characters like Toji and Sukuna are dope when they get some screen time but this fight right here and moment in particular with Yuji confronting Mahito is JJK's peak for me which has yet to be surpassed even whilst being caught up with the manga. This arc is simply incredible and one of the greatest things a modern shonen has produced. Everything adapted from the manga was either top tier or even elevated from the source material so massive thanks to the staff who made this arc even better than its already famous manga counterpart. Shibuya is generational as they say and the moments that followed this final battle and even the stuff that I didn't cover here in this video was elite as well and deserves the praise that it gets. Almost every single character from the story has been affected from the events in this arc and the overarching story in itself has been reshaped entirely. So if you truly mess with what this arc had to offer, you will not be disappointed with the following culling games arc. Yuji looks like he's been through the absolute worst of it with this new look here, but rest assured he will cook in the next arc. But circling back to Shibuya, I'm curious to know what is your favourite moment from this arc? For me personally, I've got about 3 from that final fight alone, but I want to hear you guys' favourite now that Shibuya is done and dusted. This video took longer than usual to make as I wanted to do something special for my last video on this arc, at least for the time being. So if you guys enjoyed, please leave a like for your boy and subscribe for more content on Jujutsu and any other manga I feel like talking about. I'll drop a playlist down below if you want to check out my other videos going more in depth in certain episodes of the arc. But yeah, stay tuned for a bunch of new videos and I'll catch you guys on my next one. Peace!